This week's episode is sponsored by Green Chef, one of my favorite sponsors. Thank you for sponsoring today's episode. Again, I love you, Green Chef. Green Chef is a CCOF certified meal kit company. Green Chef makes eating well easy to do with plans that fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced meal. Green Chef is there offering a range of recipes to suit your preferences. Get everything you need at their Green Market, a one stop shop for quick breakfast, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, and more. Lots of customization. Maybe you want some more protein or you don't want this side. You can do that. Superior ingredients, delicious, fast, simple. Y'all, I love Green Chef. I really do. I do. The turkey bolognese is hands down forever and always my favorite. So girls, check them out. A lot of their recipes are 750 calories or less and cook up in under 25 minutes. So it doesn't get any better than this, girls. I'm telling you. Also, they are the only meal kit that is both carbon and plastic offset offsetting 100% of our carbon footprint, as well as 100% of the plastic in every box, which is why I stand Green Chef. So listen, girls, right now we've got a special offer. If you go to greenchef.com slash unfazed60 and use my code unfazed60, you'll get 60% off plus free shipping. Again, go to greenchef.com slash unfazed60 and use my code unfazed60 for 60% off plus free shipping. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. Today's episode is sponsored by Dad Grass. I know I've got a lot of smokers out there listening, and I'm sure we've all gotten a little too high off the wrong Miss Mary Jane, and suddenly anxiety, panic, chaos. I've been there a handful of times, especially living in the state of Georgia. You know, it's not legal. We don't have dispensaries out here. So the plug sometimes be plugging you in with the wrong stuff. You, you can't really gauge your dose or uh, what you're really buying. You know, you, you can do your due diligence, but it just sometimes you get the wrong batch. And that's why I love some dad grass. OK, dad grass is legal, organic, smokable hemp that relaxes your body and mellows your mind. Their 100 percent organic pre-roll joints are very low in THC, but high in CBD so you can enjoy the effects of cannabis while keeping a clear head. Chill out without getting stoned to the bone. It's like having a glass of wine, but not the whole bottle. Okay, it's just it's the perfect pick-me-up. If you're not a smoker, not a toker, Dadgrass has you covered. Don't worry. They've got the finest tinctures and gummies on the market. Take my word for it, girls. All the mellow goodness, no smoke required. All Dadgrass products are federally legal for ages 18 and over and ships right to your door anywhere in the U.S. So whether you're looking for a new buzz or a chill way to enjoy an old favorite, Dadgrass will leave you in a euphoric mood. Right now, Dadgrass is offering my listeners 20% off your first order when you go to dadgrass.com slash unfazed. Again, go to dadgrass.com for 20% off your first order. That's dadgrass.com slash unfazed. Hey mamas, what's good? My name is Camo and you're listening to another episode of Unfazed and Unbothered, the podcast where we rant, rave, and ramble about literally any and everything. If this is your first time tuning in, go ahead and hit subscribe. Turn those post bell notifications on so you don't miss a single episode. New episodes every Thursday, anywhere you get your podcast. So, hey. Um, I'm not feeling my best today. Uh, my health has been up and down the past few weeks. I've mentioned my blood pressure. So there is no visual this week for my visual mamas. My apologies, but uh, it's just not in the cards today. But I'm okay. I did check my blood pressure and it it's uh, it's trending lower. It, it, it's, it's headed in a good direction. But uh, I don't know. I've been... Um, having this issue recently on and off where my extremities, my hands and my feet get very cold. And I don't know if you can hear this uh, floor heater I've got in my space heater, whatever I've got going on in the background, but it's keeping my little tootsies warm and cozy. But for some reason, they still feel like there's ice lava in them. I don't know what that's about. Um, (laughs) 
I'm not diabetic, though. I uh, did get that tested out plenty of times in the past year. So if anybody has any answers, any clues, I've been seeing y'all's DMs about the blood pressure and y'all's experience with blood pressure. So um, I was supposed to go on a snowboarding trip with my family. I think I mentioned that a few episodes ago and, and I had every intention of going. I was so excited to go this year. My family goes every year and I, I, I every year I've had an excuse not to go. But this year I, I was like, I'm going, I'm going to go. I'm going to have a good experience. And uh, the two days leading up to my departure, I was just not feeling good. And the night before I was really down bad. And I have a blood pressure monitor um, at my house. And uh, I woke up at 5 a.m. to head out the door. I checked it. And again, my blood pressure was stroke level. So period. Live, laugh, love. Um, (laughs) It since came down. I was taking my blood pressure medication. But I stopped taking that because it really just makes me feel fucking dizzy. Uh, And I don't like it. I I don't. But I made a lot of changes I get not really that many changes I've just kind of been eating very specific things that are good for heart health like I've been eating a lot of salmon and brown rice I eat brown rice all the time but I've been eating a lot more of it recently lots of bananas bananas are great for uh, removing sodium in your system and I don't ever add salt to anything but I do use seasonings that have sodium in them so I've had to cut back on the sodium uh, the, the seasonings, if you will. So my food has been very much just onion powder, garlic powder, minced onion, pepper, everything but sodium. So, um, yeah, it's, it's all good. Um, it is good to eat natural raw. Is that even raw at that point? Cause I done put all these seasonings on it. I don't fucking know, but it doesn't have sodium point being made and it has been helpful. My blood pressure is regulating it's getting better and today it wasn't high it was actually pretty good but for whatever reason I'm just not feeling the greatest so uh, I I didn't feel like getting ready today so again my apologies for no visual Uh, this week I yesterday actually I made a TikTok about my experience in the mall malls plural I don't know what was in the air yesterday but I went to Lenox Mall and me and my homegirl went to Victoria's Secrets and nobody was helping us. The energy we were met with was just so stale and stank. And, you know, I equally don't like people pestering me. Uh, are you finding everything okay? Can I help you? Do you need a dressing room? You know, you know people following you around and asking you again and again and again if you need help or what you're looking for. I don't I equally don't like that. But you know, a simple hi, how you doing? Uh, cute, okay? Um it bothered me that there was so many people, so many employees in this Victoria's Secrets and everybody else got greeted and everybody else was being brought Um, to dressing rooms and being offered help and asked questions and me and my friend who is another non-binary individual were just looked at with such disgust like we didn't belong there nobody was smiling at us nobody was making eye contact with us and I'm a very pleasant person in person like I'm always smiley hey how are you hope you're having a good day so I just was a little confused why the whole day yesterday, every store we went into, everybody just seemed to turn their nose up to us. And uh, yeah, so Victoria's Secrets was the last straw for me at Linux. Um, I had like a handful of panties, but uh, once I started headed towards the uh, checkout, the, the bitch at the register, she was just such a fucking cunt. And uh, she was eyeballing us with this, this look of disgust. And I was like, hey, girl. Instantly, her demeanor changed. And uh, I was like, you know what? I don't want these fucking panties. Fuck your panties, bitch. And I, I didn't say that. But I put, all, I put all them fucking panties down. And we left. We left. And then we were headed to get our nails done. But in passing, um, 
was Perimeter Mall and, you know, also Linux didn't have the perfume I was looking for. Mugler Angel Nova. It's so fucking good. If you've not smelt it, highly recommend. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous fragrance. But I couldn't find it at Linux. It was sold out. So I uh, stopped at Perimeter and I was checking out, which first of all, Mugler perfumes are refillable. You can bring your bottle in for a refill and it'll be cheaper than buying a brand new bottle. And I went to the perfume desk, key, whatever, and was like, hey, um, do you guys do refills? Oh, yeah, Mugler has refills, but not on that uh, particular fragrance. The the super, er, the Nova Angel is, uh, it's a limited edition fragrance. And um, yeah, that one does not come in refill, which it was that very Dillard's that sold it to me and told me I could come back for a refill uh, like a year prior. <laughs> So I was just flabbergasted at the bold face lie. And I'm like, are you sure? Like, I wasn't rude. And then she went, in, like, you could tell the, the woman just did not want to assist me. And um, she, you know, she was keeping her condescending customer service voice on, you know, I, you know, you know how they do. And she went and asked help to another employee and was like, does this have a refill? And she was like, I don't know if it does. I don't, I don't think so. Actually, she was kind of saying the same shit, but she's like, let me go, let me just go check. They do. She's like, oh, but we just don't have refill available for that one today. <laughs> what are the fucking odds? You did, you didn't have it. Now you do, but now it's out. Like what? what? Okay. Period. So at that point, I just wanted to smell good. So I said, you know what? Let me just buy a new bottle. They had some in stock. And she's like, okay, yeah, okay. So she's going to check me out. Mind you, um, I was wearing makeup. I had all kinds of jewelry, hoops. I was carrying a purse, a crop top. Shoulders were out. Like, I was giving very much fishy pussy, you know? And the woman, there was, like, two ladies who were standing in the way of the tap to pay. And she's, like, so pleasant with them. Excuse me, ladies, can you pardon me while I help this young man out? Emphasis on the young man. It took everything in my bones. Not to say, thank you, old lady, you fucking hag. Why the emphasis? And, you know, when I mention these instances to cis hetero people I'm often met with this disbelief or this energy of are you sure are you reading into it you know you are a little dramatic are you sure it was said or done like that they probably didn't mean anything by it but this woman looked me up and down in the most condescending way and like was so pleasant to these two ladies and then looked at me, young man, as if she needed to remind me of my biology. You know, it just really came off so intentional. Uh, but I was still pleasant. I said, thank you. And I asked her for some samples. Now, mind you, um, most of the time when you buy a perfume, without even being asked, they'll fill your fucking bag up with samples. I'm spending $150 on a perfume. Fill my bag up with five, six, seven fucking samples. They're free. It's nothing to you. And yeah, all that's going to do is bring me back to potentially buy a new fragrance. That is what samples are for, you know? And so I've asked her very politely, yeah, can I get some um, samples? Oh my goodness. Sorry, I can't talk right now. Uh, can I get some samples? She's like, yeah, I can get you some samples. I'm like, I wear, I, I wear perfumes. Uh, so just, you know, stick to the perfumes. No cologne, please. Why does she bring me two 
samples of the same perfume, the most basic perfume that every woman in the lands has smelled, Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue. It's a, it's a very great smell. I love it. Don't get me wrong. But it is like the oldest perfume in the game. It's the most basic. Everyone has smelled it. Everybody has had it. Everybody and their mothers has had that shit. Of all the new fragrances that are being advertised, you gave me two samples of the same most basic oldest in the game perfume. I just... I just can't. I saw the drawer was filled to the brim with all these samples. You couldn't have handed me some uh, s some variations. You couldn't have given me a handful. Like fuck. And and I know some somebody's probably listening. Like you're ungrateful. Oh, you're just you're doing too much. You're reaching. But when you watch people interact with hetero people as a queer person, and you see the energy that is presented to somebody else who isn't even being pleasant to them. But these random other people are being met with such positivity and such pleasant energy. And these people aren't even receptive to that pleasant energy. And here I am, one of the most pleasant people out in public, always going out of my way. To, I, I never, you, no one, you don't know what somebody's going through. You don't know the type of day somebody is having. And I know that firsthand going through everything I've been through and being discarded and being looked over when I was going through some of the hardest times of my life. And growing up, my grandmother instilled respect and uh, so much in me. And, and she was a saint of a woman and she was one of my biggest influences. So I always, put my best foot forward when I'm out in public. I always spark up conversations. I always try to be pleasant and uh, listen and engaging with people because, you know, sometimes somebody just needs that. So the fact that these other people out and about who don't even talk back when someone is saying, hey, how are you? They just look at you and they're being met with this pleasant energy. And then here I am. I am the one saying hey to you as if I fucking work there. And you're turning your nose up to me, avoiding eye contact, walking away, so unhelpful, so bothered by me needing assistance. Like, come, what, what, what else am I supposed to take from that? Am I being extra? Am I reading too into it? No, I don't think so. And I have these situations happen quite a bit. But for whatever reason, yesterday specifically, it was just so intense. And it wasn't just me. Uh, it was it was my homegirl, too. And she's another individual just like myself. So uh, we were at that point, um, I, I didn't feel like going to another mall. So I just said, chuck it at the game. I'm not going to let it rob me of my peace. Just carry on with your day camo with a smile on your face, you know. You're not for everybody. I'm aware. I expect this type of stuff. And most days it doesn't bother me because it, it's just, you know, not as frequent. But it, it really felt like every store I went into, there was a problem. Well, anyways, uh, I, I mentioned I, I went to Linux first earlier um, in, that, in the day. And while I was in Macy's, I came across this coach bag. And I talked myself out of getting it. It's this uh, leather, pink, and I, I'm so obsessed with like decorating my house pink right now. And I actually got my toes painted last night. They're a cute blush pink. My coffee mug right now is also blush pink. My deodorant sitting next to me is blush pink. So I'm in my pink era, you know. Pink is the color of love. And I'm just trying to have more self-love and um, manifest love, loving friendships, loving relationships. And I'm a very intentional person. So I'm trying to, you know, uh, color coordinate my mood and my vibe and my era. So pink everything right now. Uh, so I saw that pink coach bag. Now I am a sucker for silver hardware. Um, maybe an insignificant detail to some, but I am very detail oriented and I will almost not... I, I, I don't have any bags really that have gold hardware. Um, my cousin did give me a beautiful coach bag uh, for Christmas that has gold hardware. Um, I've not worn it out because I don't have a lot of gold. And so it's hard to find for me personally, uh, for me to match, you know, my jewelry with my bag. And maybe that's silly. Um, I will wear it because it is a beautiful bag. Uh, I just need to get some gold jewelry to really match it out. But anyways, I digress. I saw this pink coach bag at the Macy's and Linux and I talked myself out of getting it because, you know, I just I've never actually bought 
a full priced coach bag. I've, I've bought a, a few in my day from like the outlets. I've bought a lot of secondhand coach, um, but I, I'm not, I've never bought a full price coach bag and it was such a small bag. So I talked to myself out of getting it, but it had silver hardware, a silver chain. It's like a, a crossbody, and it was so cute. It fit my phone perfectly. And I, I really wanted to leave with it, but I didn't. But then fast forward, I went to perim- perimeter and, uh, I saw it again and I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to get it. I'm going to treat myself because I've been a recluse for weeks now, especially with my health. And, um, you know, I made some poor financial decisions in the past. Oh, here we go. Making another poor financial decision. I made some real poor financial decisions. I got a little too ahead of myself. I counted my chickens before they hatched. But anyways, I've I've, I've got out of that. I tell y'all too fucking much. But anyways, whatever. I'm a regular person just like y'all so these are my problems and I'm just sharing them but anyways um I haven't treated myself point being made in quite some time I've been being more responsible lately and um I haven't really went shopping much at all even the thrift stores I've gone to I've really not left with much and I haven't been thrifting much at all period so in comparison I mean y'all probably see my tiktok and be like bitch who are you lying to no it used to be crazy I would go to like five thrift stores every single day And I would spend a fortune at every single one of them. And I have since reduced my thrifting to maybe three thrift stores a week. And I don't let myself spend more than like 30 bucks if I do. And sometimes I leave with nothing, you know, so it is progress um, for myself, I'll say. But anyways, (sighs) I saw the bag again and I wanted it. I was like, bitch. This is your sign. Just get it. You don't ever see silver hardware on the coach bags. And uh, it's cute. It's pink. It's, it's it's matching your vibe right now. So just get it, Camo. Just get it. It's okay. Just don't buy anything else crazy today, okay? So I'm standing there waiting for somebody to help me. My friend is in the shoe department. The same thing all over again. There's like five employees just walking around. They see us. And um, no help. But every single other person in passing, hey, how are you? Can I help you? Are you are you looking for anything in particular? Us silence crickets. In fact, I'm standing over in the coach area. Two employees standing there, less than ten feet away. I'm a I'm a I'm five eleven. It's hard to miss me. Okay, I'm standing there, trying to look. Like, I'm looking at everything, but I've already got my mind made up on this one bag. But I'm trying to be patient while they have this insignificant conversation about some drama outside of work. Nothing pertaining to work. They're free. I know they saw me. I'm standing there. Why am I being so fucking patient? I don't fucking know. Eventually, I'm tired of standing there waiting, looking at the same fucking bag. So I'm like, hey, excuse me, uh, can I see this bag? Yes, I'll be right there. What is it? What what can I help you with? (sighs) Bitch. So she opens the case and I'm like, "That, that pink bag right there, it's really cute. And just to make conversation, you know, I'm just like, You know, I I get awkward sometimes when there's like silence if I don't know you and, you know, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to fucking talk, bitch. So I'm like, oh, it's kind of expensive. And she goes, yeah, it's coach. They are expensive. You know what, bitch? I'll take that one and that one over there. So I did. I bought two bags. And a a lot of people, I, I made a TikTok about this. A lot of people were in the comments like, you know, they work on commission. You shouldn't have bought those from her. Uh, I don't know if it was like the angels or what, but this queer man, I'm assuming he was queer. Uh, maybe I shouldn't make that assumption, but you know, the girls know, we know, we know when we know he came out of nowhere and was like, I'll take care of this. I don't know if he picked up on the energy or what it was, but he took over and checked me out. So she did not get my commission nonetheless anyways. But, um, yeah, I bought two bags. And when I said, I'll take that one and that one, she looked like, "Uh, really? I don't know what it is with people who work in designer stores, people who work in 
uh, departments, high end department stores, they all fucking turn their nose up to you and act like you don't belong there. Bitch, you are not rich. You you sell these luxury items, but who the fuck do you think you are? You're still an hourly employee. Okay, sure, you make a little commission, but bitch, who do you think you are? And there's no shade. There's no shame. Customer service is a very hard job to do. I've been, I worked in customer service for six years, seven years, something like that. It was hell. It was hell. And I hated it most, more days than not. But I would never be rude to people like that. And I would never turn my nose up to somebody for one reason or another, whatever fucking reason, whatever her logic was, I don't fucking understand. But you know what? I'm gonna be cute with my new bags. Yeah. Um, the, the spiteful bag that I bought, it was on clearance. It was like 65% off. There's like a little um, scuff on it. I guess that's why it was so cheap. But it's cute as the fuck. So I got that bitch too. Um, yeah. Got my perfume and I'm going to smell cute and gorgeous and look real cunt. But on that note, I'm going to go on a break and I'll be right back, mamas. Today's episode is sponsored by Green Chef. Green Chef is a CCOF certified meal kit company. Green Chef makes eating well easy to do with plans that fit every lifestyle. Whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced meal, Green Chef has you covered, offering a range of recipes to suit your preferences. Right now, they've expanded their menu recently with 30-plus weekly recipes. They've got the option to mix and match meals from different dietary preferences in the same box without changing your plan. Uh, So if you're keto today, vegan the next day, they got you covered. Lots of customization. Maybe you want some more protein or a little less of this. You can do that. So check them out, girls. This past week, I had the baked ricotta chicken with pesto green beans. Oh my goodness. My chops are salivating just thinking about it. So bring more flavor to your table this spring with Green Chef's wholesome elevated recipes featuring seasonal organic produce and unique farm fresh ingredients. Also, I love the fact that a lot of their recipes are 750 calories or less, and most of them cook in under 25 minutes. So good food, less time in the kitchen, everything's prepared for you, the sauces, the ingredients. It's it's too simple. It shouldn't be this simple, okay? But it is. It is. They are also the only meal kit that is both carbon and plastic offset, offsetting 100% of our carbon footprint, as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. I'm all about sustainability, girls. So listen, right now, if you go to greenchef.com slash unfazed60 and use my code unfazed60, you'll get 60% off your first order plus free shipping. Again, go to greenchef.com slash unfazed and use my code unfazed60 for 60% off your first order plus free shipping. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. Today's episode is sponsored by Dadgrass. Girls, we've all been there. Got a little too high off the wrong Mary Jane. Suddenly, anxiety, panic strikes. I know I've been there a handful of times personally, which is why I love me some Dadgrass. Dadgrass is legal, organic, smokable hemp that relaxes your body and mellows your mind. Their 100% organic pre-rolled joints are very low in THC and high in CBD, so you can enjoy the effects of cannabis while keeping a clear head. Chill out without getting stoned to the bone, if you will. It's like having a glass of wine, but not the whole bottle, okay? You don't have to always go zero to 100, okay? Just just get yourself to that perfect level, right? If you're not a smoker, not a toker, Dadgrass has you covered too with the finest tinctures and gummies on the market. Take my word for it, girl. Them gummies, mm. All the mellow goodness, no smoke required. All Dadgrass products are federally legal for ages 18 and over, and they ship right to your door anywhere in the U.S. So whether you're looking for a new buzz or a chill way to enjoy an old favorite, Dadgrass will leave you in a euphoric mood. They've also got treats for your furry friends, just saying. Right now, Dadgrass is offering my listeners 20% off your first order when you go to dadgrass.com slash unfazed. Again, go to dadgrass.com slash unfazed for 20% off your first order. 
That's dadgrass.com slash unfazed. All right, I'm back. Now, piggybacking off of yesterday's fiasco, um, I had a conversation with my aunt on the phone the other day, and she means well she does and she is by no means a prejudiced person and she's always accepted me unconditionally and made that abundantly clear my entire life and uh, when I came out to her she she straight up told me I don't love you any less I don't think of you any less uh, and, and you know it, it is what it is but when you are um a queer person, when you are a person of color, when you are a minority period, you have a different life experience than cis hetero people. And oftentimes it's hard for other individuals to understand the severity and the effect that some of these situations can, can have on people. And I have always been a very vocal person. I have always spoke my mind. I have always spoke up in the face of injustice for myself, for others. I, I, morally, I feel like that's the right thing to do. Now, I know everybody is built different. Everybody moves differently. Not everybody is going to speak up. Some people don't know how to use their voice. Some people are scared to use their voice, but I have never been. I, I, I would say I'm a pretty brave individual. I don't like to see people treated unfairly in any circumstance. I don't, I don't like to see servers treated less than. I don't like to see uh, people working in grocery stores talk to like they're dumb. I just don't like that shit. So I do... I do put my head in in places it it maybe doesn't belong quite a bit for the greater good. And I will always stick up for somebody. I will always, anytime I ever see somebody out in public being treated poorly on the clock, oh, bitch, I'm going to have a field day because they can't say nothing. And being somebody who worked in customer service for many years, when I see that shit, I'm like, you know what? They can't speak up, so I'm going to do it for them. People have told me that's not my place. People have told me to mind my own business, but I don't, and I won't. If I hear something like that, I'm going to speak up. And being queer, being a minority, and having a lot of friends of color and seeing them also treated a certain way is despicable. And I, I can't stand it. I don't tolerate it. And I won't. But when you share these stories with cis, white, hetero people, it's not that they don't see the, the, the difference in life experience because they will oftentimes validate that. But they also meet you with this energy of like, oh, well, you know, you can't let that that stuff rob you of your peace. You can't let that have power over you. You can't, you gotta, you gotta get over these things. You've got to heal and move on. It's easy for you to say that when you've been treated less than maybe a handful of times in your lifetime, whereas I get treated less than a handful of times a day a day. You know, if I had just a few specific isolated incidents, such as the incidents that happened yesterday in the malls, if those were few and far between, I would not be able to wrap my head around somebody else who is going through it the way queer people and people of color do. But because it is an everyday thing for me, it, it's, it's mind boggling. It is. And so I have a thick skin. Personally, when I am met with nasty people, nasty energy like that, I don't go home and lose sleep over it. I don't go home and pace over it. I don't go home and tuck my head in the fucking pillow and cry. I don't. Some people do, though. And that 
is why I am so vocal and why I feel it is very important to use your voice to speak up. And I was having this very conversation with my aunt and as much as she means well, she's like, well, why do, why is everything a conflict? Why is everything a conflict with you? Why, why do you feel like you constantly have to get into these altercations? Why is everything about your sexuality? People don't actually think about your sexuality the way you think they do. People don't think of you the way that you think you, th- th- that you think they do, but they do. That's the thing. Uh, what was it? Two weeks ago, I made a TikTok about this. I'm in Publix at the deli counter trying to get my meats. No pun intended. And there's a family of fucking inbred hills have eyes looking motherfuckers going back and forth. The father, the mother, the the the, the two kids who were very much seventeen, eighteen ish, all going back and forth about what's in my pants. Oh, that's a boy. No, it's a girl. Look at the that's a boy. I'm telling you, look at the look at the Adam's apple. No, that's a girl. Look at the stance and the hair and the beep and the makeup and the Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Why do people feel so confident to have such inappropriate conversations? That shit would not ever slide in reverse. And you know what? This might rub some some of my girlies the wrong way probably not because if you're one of my real girlies then you'll you'll understand this is just me speaking my my mind but i i hate i hate that there's like so many double standards um and (laughs) i don't think anybody should be objectified sexualized or i don't think anyone's private nobody's pussy nobody's dick nobody's titties should be looked at. Now, obviously, you know, there are people who are wearing very revealing clothing and it's kind of hard to miss those things. You know, I'm not a perfect person. I've, you know, I've seen some big titties and I've been like, oh shit, I took note of them. But it is rude to stare at somebody's privates. It is, it's rude and it's inappropriate. And the very people who will be in the gym and make a big fuss, get on TikTok, make videos and statements on Facebook about how this man was so creepy and made them uncomfortable, which I will not uh, take away from that. They'll post all these things, though, and be like, oh, this the men are so gross. They're sexualizing me. He's staring at my titties. Those same bitches will sit in the gym and look at my fucking dick. They do. They'll sit there and stare so hard trying to figure out, is that a fat pussy or is that a bulge? What is that? What is that? Is that a man or a woman? So it's just the, it's the double standard for me. It is because I, I see these women and I can't help but think that they too would be the ones who would get on social media and cry about how some man was sexualizing them. But what are you doing to me? Whether it's because you want to fuck me or not, you're still doing the very thing that you are disgusted by why why do people feel there's always this gray area when you're queer when you are a minority period there's always these gray areas people can say things and do things and it's like oh it's just words or it's just that like it's not that big of a deal but then you meet them with the same energy and it's a problem that's my life that's my that's the story of my fucking life i meet somebody with their energy I match their energy and I am the fucking problem. I am the fucking monster. I am the issue. Why? Why? Can somebody break that down for me? Can somebody explain that to me? Huh? I saw this TikTok of this uh, trans comedian and I was eating it the fuck up. It was so fucking funny to me. Um, She was basically saying how... Uh, Some relative in her family loves to constantly make jabs at her transition and constantly uh, dead name her and uh, refer to her as he. And uh, I guess this relative was like, why why are you getting so upset? You know, it's just words at the end of the day. Uh, It it doesn't matter. You know, you are you are you a little bitch? You know, are you a pansy? Whatever. And uh, yeah, it is just words. It's just words at the end of the day. 
Uh, so she used his same logic against him. And what do you know? I guess she introduced him as the family pedophile. And that was a problem. Huh. Interesting. I thought it was just words. Their delivery was much better than mine. And I don't know who they are, but that woman had me cackling and I was living. That's how you do it. That's how you eat them up. That's how you win at their own game. But you know what? While we're on the topic of queer, which, you know, maybe uh, the queer conversation is a bit redundant to some of you, but this is my life experience. So um, I share candidly about my life. If, if, if the queer conversations are offensive or redundant or boring to you, I'm so sorry. It's just who I am. And I'm going to keep talking about it because it's who I am. OK, uh, it's just me on this show. And uh, what else am I going to talk about? I'm not going to talk about other people's lives. I mean, I do sometimes. But anyways, I digress. But, but, but here we are. This is a queer episode, okay? Um, hetero people, specifically the boomers, the older generation, they perpetuate this logic that the media is turning us all queer, turning us all gay. Um, if that logic were in fact true... Why are we queer? Because growing up, I never saw gays on television. I never saw representation, period, really and truly. It wasn't until the past like six, seven years that the media really did put us out there like this. So if your logic is true at all, if the media had such power to do that, why do I like fucking dick? Huh? I've seen so much titties and ass shaken on MTV from childhood. I never once saw that shit and thought, damn, I want to get up in that. So you think that because people are represented on television or on the Internet, you think that's why people are now queer suddenly? No. What it does do, though, is it makes people comfortable to express themselves, their true selves, you know? Uh, there's this uh, energy that a lot of queer people are met with, myself specifically, when I came out of the closet. Um, fast forward to now, when people uh, in my family speak about me coming out, they said, and when you made that decision, when you, when you decided to, I loved you nonetheless. But anyways, when you made that decision, Coming out of the closet was not me making that decision. Coming out of the closet is not any queers, uh, queer person's, uh, that wasn't when they, that wasn't their self-discovery moment. They didn't come out of the closet one night, one day, whatever, and be like, you know what, I'm gay, I'm queer, starting today. No, it was a struggle. It was a battle that they fought for years. It was a burden they carried for years trying to, adapt and mold to be what society has taught us to be you know and now that there is all this representation and all these masculine men who like people like bad bunny and harry styles and all these men who are more comfortable with expressing feminine traits, painting their nails, wearing feminine clothing, um, speaking about bisexuality and trans people. Um, it takes away some of the stigmas. It takes away some of the stereotypes and some of the taboo energy that surrounds queer people. So when these men who have always been so masculine and who were taught as a child that men don't have emotions, boys don't cry, that's that's for girls, men got to do this, you got to play football and you got to be this and you got to, you know, when they see some of their idols and the people they look up to and the people they subscribe to being confident and comfortable um, expressing themselves and expressing their truth, now these people are like, you know what? I 
my whole life. I have kind of looked at men a certain way, but I never expressed that. Nobody is going to see somebody on television be queer and think, you know what? They were queer, so I'm going to be queer now. No, we like what we like from birth. You know, people, of course, you know, people try something out. It's like food. You, you won't know if you like it until you try it. And so there, you know, I, somebody could argue the, the, the logic that, well, how would you know you were gay if you, or you wouldn't have known if that you were gay if you didn't be, whatever. It might look like that, but uh, these thoughts and desires, they, they're natural and they, I kn I knew my whole life I was different. I tried to suppress those feelings. I tried to avoid them. I, I tried to talk myself out of them. And I can appreciate a woman. I think women are hot. I think women are beautiful. I see so many sexy women and I'm like, God damn, I want to look like that. But it doesn't cross my mind that I want to get up in that. I'm, I'm admiring them nonetheless. And yeah, I can, I can notice there's a beautiful woman and I'm not disgusted by titties or pussy i think they're beautiful i think that uh you know that we all came from a, a vagina so uh there's beauty in the female anatomy but i'm not sexually attracted to that and that's okay but i knew that my whole life i knew that all along i did i did i remember several awakenings um my grandmother had all these Greek statues of uh, naked men. And I, why was I always eyeballing their penises? You know, why was I not looking at the, the naked women? You know, why was I always like Titanic? I didn't want to see Rose. I didn't want to see her titties. I wanted to see Jack stick. OK, I'm going to be fucking frank with you. I was five when I saw that shit. Why was I so fascinated with Jack? The Notebook, one of my favorite movies of all time. I love Rachel McAdams, one of my favorite actresses, but I could not help but get flustered at such an early age by Ryan Gosling. Nobody knew that. I kept that to myself. I did not share those thoughts. And everybody around saw me interested in females. I had girlfriends. I dressed more masculine. I presented male and yeah, so for somebody who has known me to be a character that I built for my safety and for my comfort, to see me come out of the closet, to see any queer person come out of the closet, it's often thought that that was when they made this decision. No, that wasn't when these people made this decision. Something just broke them free. Something just freed them. I came out of the closet to a handful of my friends at Lady Gaga's concert. Did Lady Gaga make me gay? No, but she did give me a level of peace. And uh, uh, she, she made me confident. She made me feel like I was enough and I was perfect the way I am. And I am. And so are you. Everybody listening, we're all beautiful and perfect just the way we are who we are at our core but unfortunately there are all of these stereotypes and all of these roles that are perpetuated so um it's not the media that is making people queer maybe maybe somewhere out there a man tried some gay activities because it looked trendy, maybe, maybe, but you're not going to like some, you're not going, you're not going to force yourself into something that you're not interested in. Okay. If you're not getting satisfaction out of having gay sex, you're not going to be in a gay relationship. Okay. It's just, and so what if someone's open-minded and they tried it once? Okay, they realize they didn't like it. They're not queer now. Okay, whatever. They just, it's just okay. Expand your palate. Try new things. You won't know until you try it. Okay, so let people be queer. Let people be themselves. It, it might look trendy, but it's really just the times we're living in. People are more comfortable to be themselves. So um, it's not the media. Okay. Anyways, I'm going to go on another break. Um, thanks for listening to my tangent. I'm going to come back and... Um, yeah, per. Okay, I'm going to take a break from the queer conversations after I 
make my point going back to what I was saying. I, I go on fucking rants, tangents, but y'all, y'all know, y'all know that by now. Um, I, I shared this meme on my Instagram story today about how I say long story short and it turns into the Titanic double VHS edition. And it does, it does. So I, I completely missed my point 42 minutes in, but the importance of using your voice I can say from experience, um, my, one of my close friends, Nadia, uh, her parents were, according to her, they were kind of homophobic. Um, they, they did not have nice things to say about people like myself, but through our friendship and, uh, my, encounters with them always been very respectful asked how they were doing was very polite to them they had a change of heart like you know what I, I I like your friend they're they're very polite they're they're a very good person and uh when I was sick when I was sick dying they were praying for me they asked about me a lot and my uncle he growing up was you know, like I've said in the past, uh, the men in my family, I think they, 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 the wheels started turning in their head at a certain point that this was going to be the reality for me. And so it felt like a lot of men, specifically in my family, when they saw something queer in public or saw me subscribing to things that were queer-ish, uh, they, they would make it a point to vocalize how that is inappropriate and wrong and against religion and against God. And it was just not okay. Um, fast forward, I came out of the closet and I had these uncomfortable conversations with my family. Uh, every individual who met me with confusion or wasn't fully understanding, uh, I had the same conversation. And over time, through those uncomfortable conversations, my uncle had a change of heart. And he came to me once and was like, you know, I, I was in Wednesday service. And uh, I don't know. I don't know how the conversation sparked up. But he essentially s stood up for gays. And he was so proud of that. And I was so proud of that. And that was such a, a, a triumphant moment, in my opinion. It was a milestone in my life, if you will, because here was somebody who is very religious, very conservative, who has vocalized throughout my childhood how my identity was inappropriate um, out of fear that that's who I was becoming. And here they were having a change of heart so this is why it's important to use your voice, to speak up, to express yourself freely, because over time, it's like domino. And one by one, you, 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 we have the ability to change people's perspectives. And uh, slightly different but similar notion, you know, sometimes it really takes somebody who looks like you or comes from the same background as you to put some of these things into perspective for you to understand. My grandmother, who I was living with, she has always accepted me as is, but we did get into many tiffs because she didn't care that I wore dresses and she didn't care that I wore makeup, but she always would question why I did it, why I wanted to leave the house like that. And, uh, you know, she was always like, you're just going to you're going to get beat up or I worry about you. Or, why do you want to do this? Why don't you you know, why don't you just be more manly? Do you ever want to be manly? Do you ever want to have a girlfriend? No, I don't. And I, I know she means well, but I was tired of having those conversations, constantly having to correct her on some of my trans friends pronouns. And um, I'll never forget this past October me and her best friend, uh, all three of us went out to eat. And uh, 
I've had these conversations with her hundreds of times, hundreds of times, and it felt like it went in one ear and out the other. It just got exhausting. And her best friend really surprised me and surprised her, actually. Um, her friend has, I guess, a trans friend, and uh, me and my grandmother's friend were bonding and uh, conversating, and my grandmother took note of that. And my grandmother started asking questions she's never asked me before. She started asking me. She started asking her best friend. And I could see the wheels turning in my grandmother's head. Why? Because... It was being delivered and brought to her attention by someone who was from her generation, somebody who looks like her, acts like her, thinks like her for the most part. But here she was, very educated, really surprised me, really took me by surprise, this woman did, um, with how smart and understanding and accepting and how she was with her language and everything. She just really put things into perspective for my grandmother. The same very points that I have exhausted to her didn't stick until they were delivered by her best friend. So that's why it's important to use your voice. Um, you know, sometimes it takes a white person. This is why it's important for white people to speak up on issues pertaining to people of color, pertaining to police brutality. It's, it's important that white people use their voice because we are privileged. I am queer, so I do have that against me, but I'm white at the end of the day. So I do have a privilege that black people don't have. I, I do, and I'm aware of that. And I don't I, I didn't earn this privilege. None of us did. Uh, anybody who denies that privilege is just ignorant. And it is our job. Maybe not everyone feels like it is, but, you know, personally, it's important that we have these conversations with people because um, I, I've had similar conversations pertaining to race with family members in the past and I met them with facts I presented it pleasantly and I showed them statistics and you know the conversation was receptive it was it was uh, my family left with a change of perspective so it's important to use your voice for change to occur so I encourage everybody listening to have conversations when appropriate and necessary. Don't be quiet. Um, I mean, I guess if your safety is on the line, I understand. But sometimes you don't realize how powerful your words are. And I, growing up all through, uh, you know, after coming out of the closet, uh, I have met a lot of people who I've heard so many times and I think it's very ignorant, but, uh, I, it, 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 it just, um, proves my point here. So many people over time have been like, you know what? I didn't really like gay people, but there's something about you. I like you. I like you. I like you. You know, I didn't really like gay people, but I like you. You kind of changed my mind. And you know, that kind of like, damn, I, I, uh, it's like a backhanded compliment, but at the same time, me being myself and me speaking candidly and honestly and being so outspoken has changed a lot of people's minds on certain things. And me just being myself, I the, the highest compliment I receive regularly is, you give me the strength to be confident, to be myself. And that, that feels better than any deposit. I, I promise you. So be yourself, speak up and use your voice. Now on that note, I'm going to go into these questions you guys asked on Instagram. Uh, yeah, let's get into it. So Ms. Lorenza asks, can you be friends with an ex? I think you can. I think it's hard, but I think you can. I am friends with 
one of my exes in particular, we're really good friends. We still hang out from time to time. Uh, it's easy, you know. It was hard at first when we broke up a long time ago, and um, I, I dealt with some trials and tribulations from that breakup. But uh, now there's, you know, there's no real romantic feelings, and uh, we get along, and it we're just, just silly fun times. So I think you can, but it can be difficult. Um, Kristen Kil Kilgore, I see yourself. I see you by yourself a lot. Do you prefer it that way? Yes, I do. Um, I know I may seem very extroverted on the internet. I have a podcast where I speak, you know, so it may come as a surprise, but I would say I'm more introverted than I am extroverted. I feel like I'm somewhere in the middle, but more leaning towards introverted. My social battery is very low. I get bored and over people very quickly. And uh, at the same time, I love engaging and conversating, but my social battery is very low. So um, it's just easier to be alone and to enjoy my solitude. But I do love people and I do love to be around people. But once a, a certain energy is presented or something rubs me the wrong way, I just I just want to be alone, you know? Um, okay, they asked several questions. Teach me how to be more confident in myself. You can't change who you are. Accepting who you are at your core is the first step. Not everything is about looks. Um, if you're a good person, if you've got a charming personality, that shines through. Somebody's exterior. Um, we do live in a very superficial world, so I don't. I don't know if if you're lacking confidence for a physical reason or mental or whatever the case may be. I don't. I don't even know what you look like. But at the end of the day, none of that even matters. Uh, I, I know how easy it is to feel like you have to meet certain expectations or to look a certain way or to be a certain weight. There are pressures out there, but I am actually on a journey of showing grace to old versions of myself. Uh, throughout this weight loss journey I've been on, which I'm down 105 pounds, um, there was a period where, and, and I still struggle with this, um, there was a period where I was just repulsed and disgusted by old versions of myself. And that's why I took down all my old TikToks and old photos and everything. Uh, but recently, I've really been showing my old self grace more. I mean, it is still a struggle, so I'm, I'm not perfect by any means. I still get triggered sometimes by photos and videos of my past, but I am also realizing more and more that it was that person who got me where I am today. Bigger camo, more outspoken um, confrontational camo is the reason I have a show, is the reason I have a platform to begin with. So while I don't ever want to look that way and act and present some of those ways, I am grateful for that person, for bringing me all of you. At the end of the day, that's why you're here. That's why I'm here with y'all. So um, show grace to yourself throughout your journey, whether it is a weight loss journey or just a self-love and acceptance journey. If there's a, a tick or a, or a personality trait that you're not confident about, work on it. We're all growing. Uh, we have all the time in the world to change, to grow. And uh, evolution is a beautiful thing. Put your best foot forward. Be a better person. Um, show grace to yourself. Show acceptance to yourself. Look at yourself in the mirror and don't just see the flaws. See, see, see your strengths. Okay, don't don't focus so hard on the weaknesses. I have a lot of insecurities. I have some loose skin. I 
um, have a chip on a tooth. I, you know, there's a lot of things I could focus on, but I look in the mirror and I think, damn, I look good. I put in the work. I feel good. I'm, I'm a pleasant person to be around. I try my best to lift people's spirit. I am funny. I like to think so sometimes. I, so I've been told. I don't like to toot my own horn, but, you know, it's just, it's just the, 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 the general consensus. So there's all these good things that I can focus on. And you too. I don't know who you are, but everybody has strengths and weaknesses. So focus more on the positive things that make you you. We all have flaws. Some people just downplay their flaws and up upplay their uh, strengths. And that's what you got to do. It's, it's a it's a game at the end of the day but over time when you talk better about yourself you start to really think better about yourself and naturally like domino one by one things fall into place when you are insecure it shows when you are feeling bad about yourself it shows in the body language and the way you uh, engage in conversation all of that so Learn to accept who you are, not just for your exterior, but for who you are. We're all individuals, and there are, is something about you that is so beautiful that the next person can't relate to. You have a gift. You have a purpose. Um, so figure that out and learn to express yourself freely, and who cares what anybody thinks? If somebody is going to be ugly towards you, because you're either a bigger person or because you have certain type of hair or because of some physical trait, baby, I promise you they are miserable fucking cunts. Miserable. Okay, so don't worry about it. Be yourself. I'm so cliche, but please just be yourself. It's all you can be. You can't be anybody else. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Hmm. Perks of Raya. What's your favorite food to eat out? I love pho. Pho is so good. Mm. Delicious. The filet pho. My favorite. Loopy Lily. You had a major glow up inside and out. What changed in your life for that to happen? You know, um, I started making changes. I developed more self-awareness I feel like I've always had a level of self-awareness but when you really study the way you move and your interactions with people and uh, you watch back videos of yourself you look back to old photos you relive moments you can start to pick up where you went wrong and uh, I'm not a perfect person but I strive to always be the best I can be and uh, over time I've just studied myself I guess more so that I could change some of the things I did not like and that has helped my glow up if you will but I will say my mother was sick my mother passed away and that really started my downfall I lost myself and uh, I didn't like who I became. I was so sad and depressed. It is still something that I struggle with. I have made peace with my mother's death, but uh, it's it's hard. It's very hard. And unfortunately, y'all met me post my mother passing away. So y'all didn't get to see the lively individual I was once upon a time. And I, I had lively moments and I, I was a very vibrant personality, but I was all over the fucking place. You know, I really was. And I think back to like prior to my mother passing away, I was so out there. I mean, I've always been out there, but I was so out there in a different way, but you couldn't tell me nothing. I was so confident. And after my mom passed away, I really struggled with, finding myself and being myself comfortably and I let myself go and I'm not proud of some of the things I posted some of the things I did um I feel like there was like energies that were a little arrogant and I you know I, I, I I'm not the most proud of some of the things that I did and said in my time of growing on the internet and that's a little 
maybe um, irrelevant to your question, but uh, what changed in me was me accepting my circumstances, my identity, looking myself in the mirror, and I guess healing my inner child and getting in touch with that person and having conversations with myself and reliving situations and moving past them and uh, just accepting who I am at my core. So uh, over time, I, you know, I, I decided to go on my second weight loss journey and I started liking myself more and more being more confident in who I was has really helped that glow up. And I, I don't think it's talked about enough how weight can have such an effect on a person's mental. You know, it, it's not just a physical thing when now there are a lot of people who are bigger and they love being bigger and, or at least they, you know, perpetuate that notion. But um, personally, I did not like myself. And, you know, my homegirl that I was at Victoria's Secrets with yesterday, she was like, I'm so happy you come into Victoria's Secrets with me now because back in the day, you'd be like, why would I go in there? I don't want to go in there. And I, and I did. I very much was like that. I was, uh, I would not go into Victoria's Secrets with my friends. Why? Because I hated myself physically. I loved myself, uh, you know, my spirit, and I love, you know, who I was at my core, but I didn't like my physical state. And I knew there was not anything in fucking Victoria's Secrets that was going to flatter me or make me look good or make me feel confident. Somebody else could look at me and be like, but you look good. You look good. It don't matter what other people think. It matters what you think. And I was not happy with my physical. So um, I was kind of aggressive because I was triggered um, and when certain conversations arose. And same thing with like women's shoes. My friends, my other non-binary and queer and trans friends, most of them have little feet. I wear a size 12 in men's shoes. So when they would um, be like, let's go look at shoes, it triggered me. It did. Um, but now, I mean, that's kind of irrelevant because it's more so weight, but, um, you know, there's things like only maker out there for me. Thank you so much. Beautiful heels. I love them. But, uh, the weight thing, you know, losing weight, my confidence grew. And when you have more confidence, you're more pleasant. You're more in tune with yourself. You are less likely to get into, conflicts and I'm not perfect I still get into little tussles with people but the delivery and the energy is way different back then if somebody pissed me off I was already miserable with myself so I was just looking for a fight and I would just let you fucking have it and I would say uh, maybe what I said you know needed to be said but just the way I delivered it was just in my opinion not something I'm proud of now when I get into these tiffs I'm a little more fact of the matter and pleasant about my delivery and that comes from my confidence I can stand and feel good about myself and because of that it has helped me heal inside and it's helped me be a more pleasant positive person so um, confidence is where this glow has came from uh, to answer your question let's see my Adderall is doing its thing today sorry for the rants I'm not sorry bitch um, Gabby Martinez, best advice to get in the groove. I'm assuming you mean like the gym or something or eating better. It takes what, 28 days to start a habit. You'll start to see results soon. Um, I, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe it's body dysmorphia, but I swear. And maybe it's just from the muscle memory I have. But when I like am out of the gym for a period, when I go back two or three days in, I already feel like I see results. And I'm like, oh, shit, bitch, I better stay on track, which, by the way, I need to go to the gym today because I didn't go yesterday. So uh, just get in a routine and you you are in charge of yourself. Nobody else is. Nobody else is going to make you do these things. Nobody's going to get you there but you. So when you realize that, you know, Prior to me losing weight, both times I've lost over 100 pounds in my lifetime. It took me, you know, over time I'd, I would make excuses. I'd go, one day, one day, one day, you know, one day I'll do this, one day I'll do that. But then one day came and I'm like, you know what? That one day will never come 
until I make today day one. So let today be your day one, okay? Hmm. Let's see, let's see. Uh, Mom is going to lose it. What are your goals for 2023? Just to continue my health and fitness journey, uh, make better decisions. I've still not smoked. Well, that's a lie. I haven't smoked really since Valentine's Day, which is a huge deal to me. But last night I did hit my friend's roach twice. Um, I didn't have like a freak out. My anxiety didn't peak, but I did. Um, I felt like I was having a little bit of an outer body experience. Uh, I was very calm and, you know, it, it was a, a pretty chill high, but during that high, I couldn't help but realize that this is why I kind of put smoking weed behind me for now. I'm a realistic person. I'm not going to say that I'll never smoke weed again because that would just be a lie, a bold faced lie. But um, just, you know, my goals are to continue being the best I can be. Uh, I want to get a new car. I do my car. She's done me well. And I'm very appreciative of everybody who uh, brought her to be brought her to me. But she is cosmetically hurting and she's up there in miles. She's like 180,000 miles now. But she's a Toyota, so she really could hold it, hold it down for another 100,000 miles, realistically, or more. So, um, yeah, new car. Um, I want to put some music out, a project or two, photo shoots. You know, I just want to really focus on myself and my work. And that's why, that's why I moved far away um, from everybody was so that I could just be in my own energy. So, um, Isabel La Davis, Selena or Haley, come on now. Selena, what? We don't deserve her. She is so, I mean, I don't know her personally, but whether it's a facade or not, she does put out on the internet such positive energy and that shit's infectious. You know, people see that and it, it, they 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 take a, a bit of that. They, they leave with something. And so uh, I think Haley is a fucking wacko weirdo. I mean, look at all the shit she's done to mock and mimic and try to really become Selena Gomez. And then you got Kylie Jenner uh, t chiming in and, and just being a part of the problem. Uh, I think what it really comes down to is when you look at Haley and Kylie um, realistically prior to the work that they've had done. I mean... I, I, I too would kind of be jealous by Selena Gomez. She's breathtakingly beautiful in her most natural state. She's always been. She's always had poise. She's always been so kind in interviews. And, you know, she's always, from what I've seen, always been such a pleasant, accepting and understanding, humble individual. And those two girls have been nasty and uh, have just... Uh, They've had all this work, which is fine. I mean, I've, I've got some filler in my lips. Um, I'm, I'm not against any work being done, but I do think it's real funky when people who get work done try to put down other people who have not had work done. Nobody has to get work done. Nobody should feel like they need to get something done. If you get work done, that needs to be because you want to get it done for you, okay? But once you do get that work done, you're not above anybody. You're not above anybody who's natural, and Selena Gomez has just always been fucking gorgeous. And uh, yeah, so absolutely team Selena 1000%. Um, mm, oh, would Pecco. What is the hardest lesson you've had to learn in the past year? <sighs> My biggest toxic trait is is being so forgiving and patient with people who don't deserve that. So I've had to learn that sometimes it's best just to cut the cord. I've had, um, you know, a very public friendship that was rocky on and off, on and off, on and off. But this last time I said, you know what, Camo, I'm not going to beg this person to be my friend anymore. They don't respect me. They don't understand me. They think they're above me. They're not. And I will not tolerate that. 
And, uh, you know, I'm not perfect. You know, I probably made that person feel certain ways too, but I just, that was the biggest lesson was to move on and to accept that some people are seasonal partners, friends, some family seasonal. That's okay. It's okay. I'm very sentimental. So it is in my nature to fight until the wheels fall off, but that did nothing but stress me out. I tried to change for so many different people. I tried to be what other people wanted me to be for so long. I tried to prove myself to so many people, so many partners, so many friends in the past. And, you know, it's just not in the cards. The universe showed me so many times that it was time for me to walk away from a lot of situations. And I was so stubborn. So the hardest lesson for me was to just walk away and be okay with uh, reminiscing the good times that individual I had a lot of wonderful memories with and I did love them. I still have uh, a level of love for them. I I don't wish them ill. I would never wish negative on anybody. That shit comes back tenfold, Uh, but it's just not meant to work out and that's okay. Cherish the good times, but all that um, back and forth, all it does is it tarnishes those times. So there was just a seasonal person. There's a lot of seasonal people out there. That is okay. Um, I think I'm going to wrap this episode up. And uh, yeah, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate y'all. Did not anticipate this episode being so long because I wasn't feeling my best. But I think after getting some of this shit off my chest, I'm feeling a lot better. It's actually my feet and my hands have warmed up. I'm getting a little toasty. I'm going to turn this fucking heater off and I'm going to hit the gym. So I love y'all. Use your voice. Speak up and have the day you deserve. Okay.